Hi there, my name is Mimi Chan. I'm a registered dietitian, certified diabetes educator, and I will be guiding you in these next seven days to help you get your blood sugars under control. Now, today is day one, first day and one of my favorites. Why? Because as Zig Zagler said best, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great and we all gotta start somewhere. So are you ready to be great? Are you ready to be better? Because I'm ready to help get you there. First day is the best because you're the most motivated. You're ready to go, ready to take on any challenge. Now, since you have all this energy, how do you get started? Well, I like to give you a couple of things that's going to set up this winning mindset. First is clear your mind. Clear your mind of all the misconceptions, everything that was troubling you, all of those confusions that you had. Clear your mind because you're starting fresh. Avoid bargaining with yourself. Avoid bargaining with yourself with excuses. The only thing that comes out of bargains is flea markets, and it's the only thing that it's actually good for, too. So when it comes to your health and happiness, do not bargain with yourself. There is no bargain in this. You want to do great. Take a deep breath because this is a journey. This is not a sprint, this is a marathon, and we're going to get to our goal. So take a deep breath because we're off. Now first, learn how to navigate what I like to call the layers of living success, or LOLS. LOLS is a eating system that is based on the principle of eating your way to a better life. This system is meant to optimize your nutrition without breaking that sugar bank. And the beauty of it is you get to eat for your blood sugars. You get to chew smartly based on your goals and still be able to enjoy your meals. LOLS is a way of eating created to make eating well for our bodies as simple as possible. At the same time, it highlights that nutrition should be the top of your priority. Now, what really is layers of living success or this LOLS you're telling me? Well, LOLS is simply made up of different layers of food, each with a variety of foods to choose from, ranging from the top of your priority to the least of your concerns. So there's always something for everyone. Maintaining balance is always our key enemy. <laughs> These layers give you the balance you want without compromising your taste buds. Each layer teaches you what is preferred and how to eat for success. And the layers are also color-coded to show you how it would look like on a plate, helping you take out that guesswork of how much to have. So now that you have an idea about what the system is, what are these layers? Layer one is one of my favorites. It's called the No Daily Limit Layer. These are the foods that are usually neglected but have the highest nutrition ratings. They are filling, they are tasty, they are attractive, and the combinations are practically endless. The best part? You get to eat all of these foods that you want. This layer has something for everyone. You can find your familiar foods or even ideas for the adventurous, for the unfamiliar foods, and introduces new textures and taste to your world. There is even a special section that I created for herbs and sauces that will brighten and flavor your meals. Now, it doesn't hurt that it also has a lot of foods that are rich in antioxidants, and antioxidants are a type of stuff that will help protect your body. If you have the chance to eat organic, I would say give it a try. Your taste buds may surprise you. Layer two is the layer called preferred proteins. Now these foods were hand-picked because these are the foods were needed for daily functions since they have important jobs in your body. They're known as the body's building blocks and they help build and repair our tissues. These proteins are picked specifically to help maximize your body's potential. They're also great for curbing your hunger, they're filling, and they also have a low risk of spiking your blood sugars. The way I like to approach this layer is to mm, prepare them by steaming it, grilling it, baking, broiling, or even slow cooking to bring out a little bit more of those flavors. Now, if you have a chance to eat organic, uh, cage-free, or even both, I would say give it a shot. Layer three is what I like to call the favorite fats. Now, if it hasn't been your favorite fat yet, you still have time to get close to these gems because they provide the body with the useful type of fats to help maintain your daily protection. What type of protection you're asking? Well, it's great to help protect your eyes, your brain, and also it supports body functions like helping you make hormones. 
Now, the way that I like to approach this layer is that if it's oils, I would like to cook with them, or if it's something like a nut butter, like a peanut butter, you can spread them on something. Uh, if it's something like nuts, you can eat them as is, or even mix them in certain dishes to give it extra flavor and texture. Layer four is what I call the low glycemic index food. Now the name's a little bit scary, but it's really not all that crazy because these are a type of foods that are still carbohydrates, but are known to have a generally lower risk of spiking your blood sugar than the other foods. Also, they're higher in nutrients than some of the others, so they were handpicked especially for that case. And as well as these are the carbs you want to consider first when you're planning your meal. Now that you have an idea about these layers, how do you use them? What does it look like? And what? how do I create a meal with it? I want to give you a couple of tips in order how to uh, use this effectively. So first thing is always having the right utensils. Start with a nine inch plate. This is the only measurement you'll ever need to take. This is going to help you get an idea on how it looks like on a plate once you put it out together. And also the thing is that it will help set you up for success because you won't overly restrict yourself as well. Number two is look at your hand. Not anyone else's. You want to always use your own hand. Forget the whole idea about a deck of cards, looking at a woman's hand, or your significant others, or using a CD case. You want to use what's always on with you all times, which is your hands. So remember this mantra for all your meal needs. Fist, palm, thumb. Repeat after me as you're making these gestures. Make a fist, palm, and thumb. These are important because you want to use this in measuring out your layers. At every single meal, you want to have at least this much of layer one, two, and three, and at most, this much of layer four. So at least the palm size of layer two, at least the thumb size of layer three, at least the fist size of layer one, and at most half of fist size of layer four. These were placed to let you know that this is not a diet. This is not to starve yourself. This is not to restrict you. And in so giving you these ideas of how to put together the meals is going to make it a tasty adventure. Speaking of tasty, number four is very important to me because I want to make sure that you're enjoying this. Your meal should make sense to you. These are foods that you're picking out from these layers that you actually like, that the combinations are going to appeal to you. It's going to look appetizing. You're going to look excited at every single time you get to eat these meals. It shouldn't be restrictive or make you cry at every single time that you're going to be looking at your next meal. No, that's not the way that we're setting up for success. This is not a healthy mindset. I Either. So pick some of the foods that you like from uh, the layers and create it in that way. And in that case, you're always going to be happy. Last but not least, always have unsweetened beverages at every single meal. This week, when you're going through uh, this eating pattern, you're going to be changing some of the things that you usually used to do. And so your body's going through a change as well. Staying hydrated is very key in this week. So make sure you're drinking plenty of unsweetened beverages at meals and in between. Now, what are some things about unsweetened beverages, right? What are some ideas of it? Well, it could be water. It could be your unsweetened coffees like espresso or black coffee, or even a whole arrangement of teas. There's plenty of different herbal teas out there. There are black teas, green teas, white teas, you name it. You have a whole world to explore. Of course, unsweetened. And the whole point of eating well is eating for your blood sugars. That's the whole reason you're here and why I'm here. So here's an example of what your plate should look like after you pick out the foods you want to have and how you want to put it on your plate. As with any sort of times that you're trying to uh, prepare meals or actually, you know, trying to figure out what to eat, the ingredients doesn't even give much of uh, imagination. So sometimes, Here's a couple of tips, you know, that will help a lot of you in making sure that you're picking the right things out and also make things a little bit easier. So when you're looking at, um, let's say, breakfast, right, pick out your layer two and layer three first. Once you have an idea of your entree and what type of fats you want to use, you're going to have an idea on what to do with layer one 
and layer four. So seasoning, I leave it always up to you because everyone has different taste buds. Some might like a little bit spicy, some like it a little bit uh, more sour, some like it actually a little bit of a bitter balance like uh, with broccoli rob or radicchio. So I definitely leave that up to you. In that case, you're going to have an idea about what works and what doesn't work for you. Layer one, you can always pick more than one of layer one foods. And so in that case, you're gonna have a little bit more nutrients, a little bit more fun with it, as well as a little bit more taste and texture. Layer four will always be the last part of your meal. And as always, drink plenty of unsweetened beverages this week because you're going to definitely need to stay hydrated. Using the principle of LOLS, I picked out a couple of things of uh, what your day can look like just to show you how simple you can use. So for breakfast, you can look forward to three scrambled eggs with a pinch of salt, pepper, tarragon, olive oil with a little richness from half an avocado, sauteed spinach for that savory component with garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper, a snack apple, and having a refreshing green tea to mix together the flavors. For lunch, you can look forward to something like a uh, sardines with lemon and capers. You can use canned and olive oil if you want. That just minimizes a little bit on that preparation. Uh, pair it with olives and pistachio, a little bit of hummus, a little freshness from mislin greens with a splash of balsamic vinegar, and a tall glass of refreshing mint lemon water. Now dinner time, what can you do? You can throw everything on a grill and have grill night. That way it minimizes a lot on that cleaning and also gets everything done at the same time. So you can look forward to mesquite pork chops, grilled vegetables with the zucchini, bell peppers, red onions. That's my preference, but you might like to grill up other vegetables. Slice avocado with a little bit for that little bit of richness and uh, also grilled peach for to end the night, as well as um, seltzer just for a little bit of that bubbly action. Now, I don't know about you, but after looking at this menu, it's enough to get me salivating. So in any case, I'm sure that you're going to find plenty of things that are going to work out for you. Layers two and three may cause some confusion in the beginning because of that word at least. That just means that you get to have more of those foods. But, you know, you want to maintain that minimum so that that way you don't deprive your body of what it needs. So. If you need to have uh, two palm sizes of mesquite pork chops to feel satisfied or for it to work for you, do it. Just as long as you understand it's not unlimited, then you're good. Checking your blood sugars. You want to always know what your blood sugar is, where you stand. That's the whole reason for starting this whole entire program. Well. Before you start this though, I wanna make sure that you have a discussion with your doctor. Your blood sugar goals are going to be different than someone else's. And so you wanna have a discussion with your doctor to know what those goals should be before beginning this program. Uh, blood sugars that are very high are important and they've been emphasized multiple times, I'm sure by different people in your life or different professionals, but recognizing low blood sugars are also very important too. Um, medically, it's known as hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is dangerous because if it gets too low, then at that point you can easily have side effects as well as, you know, not feel well and it can be pretty dangerous as well. So low blood sugar numbers are something that you want to be aware of and to prevent. Now, low blood sugars are usually less than 70 milligrams per deciliter. That's the number 70 when you look at your meter as uh, you take your blood sugar. Some common signs of low blood sugar would be um, like anxiety, like sweatiness, palpitations, headaches, fatigue, mild confusion. If you've ever had any of these symptoms, I'm sure that you have an idea about you know what you feel like when you have low blood sugar. These are just some of the common symptoms that other people have as well that's associated with low blood sugar. Whenever you feel this, you want to make sure that you check your blood sugar to know where you stand. If you do check your blood sugar at that time and it's lower than 70, here's what you do to bring it up. It's what I call the 1515 rule. Now the 1515 rule is in a place because you needed to bring up that blood sugar to a safe level 
fast. And so this is the time where you want to make sure that you're having nothing diet, you have to have that sugar. So the way to bring up your blood sugar at this time when it's lower than 70 is take 15 grams of carb. Some examples of 15 grams of carb include things like drinking four ounces of regular juice or soda, or having a tablespoon of honey, or if you went to the pharmacy and bought glucose tablets, follow the instructions on the label. Take whatever method you want and wait 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes, check your blood sugar again. You want to be above 70. And if at that time you're still lower than that number, do step one one more time. So whichever way that you did the first time, whether it's drinking the juice, whether it's taking the glucose tablets, or whether it was taking that honey, do it one more time and wait 15 minutes. After those 15 minutes and you recheck your blood sugar again, normally it would go up for most people by the second time. So at this point, you're good and you want to just make sure that you're not feeling these symptoms continually. Now, if you did this step twice and it's still low, you want to call your doctor right away. And at this point, I want to congratulate you because you did it. Today is day one. You didn't push it off for tomorrow. Everything is in the present and everything is now. You have decided that you wanted to get this under control. You want to do great for yourself and you want to feel better. So take everything that we've talked about today and go over one more time if you need to, look at the papers one more time, pick out some of the things that you know is going to work for you. And until tomorrow, I wish you happy eating.